نستعينه ونستغفره ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساءة من يطع الله ورسوله فقد رشد ومن يعصهما فلا يضر إلا نفسه هو الذي أرسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليذهره على الدين كله ولو كرها المشركون قال عز وجل يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون أما بعد فقال عز وجل في محكم التنزيل أشد خلقا أم السماء بناها رفع سمكها فسواها رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأهل الأخرة من لساني يكبر قولي اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا الطباء وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابا اللهم ألحمني مشتي وعزني من شر نفسي I have a few things I want to talk about but uh, one is an article that came out of Wall Street Journal that's very, very interesting. It's, uh, the title of the article is one that you would not expect. Science increasingly makes the case for God. Uh, this author has written this article. It's very, very interesting. And in fact, this article is an explanation of one of the ayat of the Quran. It's an explanation of one verse of the I will be sharing. But before, you know, whenever it comes to science, I'm very, uh, I have mixed feelings. People consider science to be, uh, you can say, people don't, people believe in science to the point of scientism. Whereas the fact is that in the postmodern world, we know now, for example, that physics contradicts with the branches of chemistry. Astro quantum physics contradicts the teachings of mechanical physics. So it's not like, you know, science is this thing that's all, there's no contradictions. Even in, in, in biology, you know, uh, but forget about biology, because biology is a little bit tougher because it has to do with human tests and so on and so forth, but, but pure physical sciences, chemistry and physics, there are contradictions within them. And we have to understand this because we take science to be like the holy grail. I'll give you an example. Very, very, I'll give you a few simple examples that have to do with this article. There is a law in science. By the way, people don't, sometimes even realize what is the meaning of the word science and what is it that Quran calls towards that is similar to science but not science because all these things they have histories there was a time that even when Muslims were making inventions when we were making observ observatories to look at the sky, and when we had chemistry, and when we made algebra, these are all sciences. In Arabic, we call it alum. These were all sciences, branches of knowledge. But when we say science in today's world, what science means, a particular way of verifying information. That's what it means. When you say science says this, it means that there has been a process of verifying information in a specific way, and that way is called the scientific process. Now, I'm not going to go into the details of this. I only wanted to mention that using the scientific process, even using the scientific process, there have been contradictions, even in what we have observed. For example, everybody knows the law of physics that started from the, because, you know, Newtonian physics completely contradicts with Einstein's physics. I don't know how many people know this. 
But Newtonian physics teaches matter can be nor created nor destroyed. You've all heard of this. Matter cannot be created nor destroyed. But we know that there is such a thing as a Big Bang. There was nothing and then there was a big explosion. So it contradicts. You're saying on the one side, science is saying, matter can be nor created nor destroyed. On the other side, we're saying, yes, there was nothing and then there was something. This is just one of many examples. This is why many philosophers have become tired uh, and, and have given a new term to the age that we live in. They call it the postmodern world. This is no longer the modern world. The laws of thermodynamics are completely negated in the expansion of the universe. If I shoot a bullet, when the bullet leaves the gun, it will be fast. As it goes farther and farther, it will get slower. This is the laws of physics. But the universe is expanding faster and faster. Opposite. So it's not like, you know, people need to understand that science does have contradictions. For example, just, you know, I don't want to, this is the whole subject. When you look at ions, the moving of the ions in chemistry, how ions move in chemistry, and how ions move in physics, two different fields of science, they have an opposite answer. One says ions move counterclockwise, the other says it moves clockwise. So it's not like, even in medicine, some research says A, another research says B, and you know, it goes on. Anyway, my point was that there is a, a book called Structures of the Scientific Revolution written by Cohn Thomas. University of Chicago is probably the most, uh, probably one of the most well-known universities in the country that are known for the social sciences. And University of Chicago is also known to be the most atheistic, secular, non-religious university in the country. More than Harvard, more than Yale, more than Princeton. If you go to University of Chicago, the only perspective you're going to get and the only perspective that will be accepted from you is a secular perspective, not a religious perspective. I don't know how many people know this. <clears throat> but the point I'm trying to make, one of the things that every graduate student has to read in the University of Chicago is a book called is a book called Structures of Scientific Revolution by Thomas Cohen that discusses this it's a whole book it's considered the top 100 readings on the list of University of Chicago this book is one of the first books that came out that discusses clearly and openly many of the differences between the different branches of physical sciences. Many of the different, different. for example, you've all heard that light is a wave, but you've also heard light is a particle. You've also heard that maybe sometimes it's a wave, maybe sometimes it's a particle, depending upon how you're looking at it. And there's so many of these issues. The reason I'm giving this introduction, it's not that I'm anti-science, but I want this to be in your minds. It's not like all the laws of science they don't contradict one another. No, there is some contradiction. And this is a fact. So science isn't as much of a, like some people would like to think, a holy grail to answer all our questions as much as people would like. Now, having said that, I want to discuss this article that came up on Wall Street Journal that is actually an explanation of one ayah of the Qur'an. Qur'an does say, by the way, and I will discuss this with the verse, one of the verses I discuss it. What does Qur'an promote? This I will discuss. The, article of the, the title of the article is Science Increasingly Makes the Case for God. Now let me give you an introduction to this. When Nietzsche, the philosopher, came out with the idea that God is dead, But when he came out with this idea, he basically meant that, you know, even if there's God, what is he to us? We have science now. We can, and if you know science, where did science formally start? The scientific method, where did it start? It started in England with the Royal Science of Society. Uh, Royal Science Society. Actually, just as a side point, 
all the great fitans that I consider fitans from the Quran and the Sunnah. They all started in, in England. Political, social, economical. Riba, first bank, England. Creation of Israel, England. The sexual revolution, England. And science, as it is taken as a holy grail, an answer to everything and everything, England. I mean, so, and there's a hadith, by the way, about this island. England is an island. This small island that will take over the world and then retract back. The hadith of the Prophet on this issue, I'm not going to go into this. But all the problems that we find ourselves in the modern world, they, a lot of their, you can say, beginnings start with this island. Anyway, the point I was trying to make was that there was an idea that, okay, if there is no God, how do we prove it? If we can prove that there is life because if there's life on this earth, and it happened through a natural process called the Big Bang, then there must be life on other planets. And you know, the Congress approved billions of dollars in a program called SETI, S-E-T-I, in which they put uh, radio telescopes to, to listen to uh, other planets, to find other planets that might be able to listen for life on other planets. Carl Sagan was an astronomer who was known as an expert on these issues. He first started out by saying, well, there's only two basic principles that if they're met, we can probably find another planet that has life, which will therefore then mean that there is no God. Now, with this introduction, I'm going to read this article to you. In 1966, Time Magazine ran a cover story asking, is God dead? Remember the philosopher Nietzsche I was referring to? This title is actually in reaction to that. The first person who ever said God is dead was Nietzsche. Many accept, accepted the cultural narrative that he's absolute. We don't need God anymore. In fact, the, the, what I wanted to mention was the Royal Society of uh, Science used to publish articles in the 1800s. Oh, with science, we're going to solve all the diseases of the world. With science, we're going to solve all the hunger problems of the world. With science, we're going to do this and this. Obviously, they had no idea. They also make the atomic bomb that can destroy the world a hundred times over. And they would not have made any medicine that can cure the world a hundred times over. As science progresses, there is less need for God to explain the universe. We have science to explain the universe. Even though over here, this is also a misunderstanding, but I'm not going to go into that yet. Yet it turns out that the rumors of God's death were premature. Most amazing is the, that the re relatively recent case for his existence comes from a surprising place, science itself. Here's the story. The same year Time Magazine, meaning 1966, the same year Time Magazine featured the now famous headline, the astronomer Carl Sagan announced that there were two important criteria for a planet to support life. The right kind of star and the right distance from the star. So if you find some place where the energy is enough and you're enough distance from the star, then you'll find uh, other life forms like us because if it happened in one place, and that's what, why I was mentioning the scientific method. One of the criteria of a scientific method is you can reproduce the same thing over and over again under the same conditions. So under the same condition, if I'm in one room, I pick up an apple, it falls. I take it to another room, it falls. Therefore, my hypothesis that there is a gravity exists. If there is a sun and then there is a planet X distance from the sun and the sun has this much energy, therefore there is life. So the same should be true for all the other places that have a planet X distance away from the sun. So, the same year Time Magazine featured the now famous headline, astronomer Carl Sagan announced that there were two important criteria for a planet to support life, the right kind of star, and a planet the right distance from the star, given roughly, roughly octillion, which is one followed by 27 zeros, that's the estimated number of stars that they had assumed at that time. Planets were, uh, that's how many uh, uh, planets they assumed to be in the universe. 
there should be about uh, one septillion, which is uh, 24, one with 24 zeros, okay, so that support life. So total number of planets would be one followed by 27 zeros. And the numbers that are the right distance away from the sun with the right type of energy would be one followed by 24 zeros. So 27 and 24. Okay. Should be capable of supporting life. With such spectacular odds, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, also known as, uh, well, I'll go into that. Search for extraterrestrial intelligence, a large, expansive collection of private and publicly funded projects launched in the 1960s was sure to turn up something soon. Scientists listened to a vast radio telescope network for signals that resembled coded intelligence and were not merely random. But as, as, but as the years passed, the silence from the rest of the universe was deafening. Congress defund, defunded, meaning they had funded billions of dollars to listen, maybe there's some life, after all there's all this, there's such a huge probability. So there must be life on other planets. And then, after listening for 30 some years, the Congress said, well, you know, this is just a, a cost on us that we're not going to bear anymore, sorry. But they continued to fund it through private sources. Scientists listened, to, listened with a vast radio telescope network for signals that resembled color-coded intelligence that were not merely random. But as years passed, the silence from the, the rest of the universe was deafening. Congress defunded SETI in 1993. But the search continues, the, the search was continued with private funds. As of 2014, researchers have discovered precisely zero planets that can support life. What happened? So within this 30 years, between now and then we found nothing, and Carl Sagan started out with two criteria. What happened in these 30 years? Why it took so long to come to this conclusion anyway? What happened? As our knowledge of the universe increased, so our knowledge for the universe increased, it became clear that there were far, less fact far more factors necessary for life than Sagan supposed. So it was not just a matter of the sun being the right distance away from the planet, it wasn't just that, but you had to have the right amount of gravity, the right type of temperature, just the right amount of uh, chemicals, the right type of cycles, like water cycles, so on and so forth. You had to have, so it started with two, then went up to 10 criteria, then 20 criteria, and then finally they said 200, now it's more than 200, and now they're saying even the earth shouldn't be here. Even the Earth should not be here. As I've discussed in one of my other lectures, the fact that Earth has iron in its core is against its physical location. Iron only exists near the black hole. It doesn't exist at the very edges of the universe. So, anyway, let me just read this quickly. What happened? As our knowledge of the universe increased, it became clear that there were far more factors necessary for life than Sagan supposed. His two parameters grew to 10, and then to 20, and then to 50. And so the number of potentially life-supporting planets decreased accordingly. The number dropped to a few thousand planets and kept plummeting. Even SETI proponents acknowledged the problem. So those people that were for funding and keep listening, they, were also, they also acknowledged the problem. Peter uh, Snackle wrote in 2006 piece, uh, he wrote for Skeptical Inquirer magazine, in the light of new findings, meaning now that the fine-tuning of the universe to have life is just increasing and increasing, he wrote, in the light of new findings and insights, it seems appropriate to put excessive, uh, to put excessive euphoria to rest. Meaning, don't be too excited. Euphoria. Don't be too excited. You're going to find something out there. We should quietly admit that the early estimates may no longer be tenable. The early estimates that we're going to find life somewhere beyond Earth, um... Uh, I don't think so. As factors continued to be discovered, the, the number of possible planets hit zero, mathematically speaking, and kept going. In other words, the odds turned against any planet in the universe supporting life, including this one. Probability said that even if we that we shouldn't even be here, scientifically speaking. <coughs> 
Today, there are more than 200 known parameters, para parameters necessary for a planet to support life, every single of which must be perfectly met or the whole thing falls apart. Without a massive planet like Jupiter. This is very, very interesting. Why does Earth not get hit by comets? You know, some comets come and they get hit, right? Why doesn't Earth get... Because after Earth, after Mars, there's a planet Jupiter that's so big and has such a huge gravitational force that any comet that tries to come to Earth, Jupiter sucks it in to itself. And it's been many times seen in NASA, including the most recent time, about a few years ago, where they actually took pictures of plant, the, the comets that were going to hit the Earth. They were in the direction of hitting the Earth, but the gravitational pull uh, of Jupiter uh, uh, sucked it in, and, and they took pictures of this, and it was a big deal um, in NASA at that time. Um, Whose gravity will draw away asteroids? A thousand times as many would hit Earth's surface. Meaning there would be thousands of uh, asteroids hitting the Earth if it wasn't for... This is just one of the many, many factors, right? Out of like 200. Odds against life in the universe are simply astonishing. Yet here we are, not only existing, but talking about existing. What can account for it? Can every one of these many parameters be have been such perfect by accident? And and, and, and mind you, when we talk about perfect per, perfect parameters, it literally I don't have time to go into this right now. But we literally because when the Big Bang happened, when at that moment, when that first milli millisecond after, even the millionth of a million second before that big burst happened. Everything was decided there because, you know, it's like if you are going straight, but if you take a one degree turn to the other direction, then it, you're in a different place totally. So the same thing with all these 200 factors. They had to be precisely set at the moment of the Big Bang from which the whole universe came in. Just even, even uh, one to the point of, you know, 27 uh, being in the wrong direction, this universe wouldn't exist. So it's amazing that life exists, but it's even more amazing that the universe exists. This is the point of the article. This is one of the points of the article. Life existing is quite improbable, almost impossible, almost Im improbable to the point of being close to impossible. But the chances of the universe itself existing are absolutely impossible. So just follow with me. But before I do that, I want to share with you a verse of the Qur'an on this subject. You can say this whole article is an explanation of one ayah of the Qur'an, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and by the way, this topic is mentioned in Qur'an twice. أَأَنْتُمْ أَشَدْتُ خَلْقًا Were you a more hard creation? You life, your life. You, this was hard? Or the sky. This universe that we created was harder, was more improbable, or your life? Allah asks. You know, man becomes so boasting and so plays God and all of these things. So Allah says, We created this universe. And it was impossible to Meaning, it was more improbable to create the universe in the first place than man. Now, having said this, now if you listen to what he says. Yet here we are, not only existing, but talking about existing. What can account for it? Can every one of those many parameters have been perfect by accident? At what point is it fair to admit that science suggests that we cannot be the result of random forces? Doesn't assuming an intelligence created the, uh, that an intelligence created these perfect conditions require far less faith than believing that a life-sustaining Earth just happened to beat the inconceivable odds to coming into being? <coughs> Meaning, to say that we just happened by accident takes a lot more faith than to say there must have been something intelligent to create human beings. There must have been some intelligent power 
to create the universe, it takes it that is that takes a lo- it takes a lot more faith than all this happened by accident. Wall Street Journal, most recent article, by the way. That that's more. There's more. So this is the first point is the improbability of life coming on Earth. The second point is what is even more improbable is the universe coming into existence out of nothing. Again, I'm running out of time, so let me do this quickly because I have two more verses to share with you that will quite astonish you if you've never heard them before. The fine-tuning necessary for life to exist on a planet is nothing compared with the fine-tuning required for the universe to exist. It's nothing in compared. So we talked about how improbable it is to find life on other planets or life to exist. This is one in, you know, it's, it's in octillions, 27 zeros, improbable for life to exist. Even Earth should not be here. But for the universe to exist in comparison to life to exist is between these two, even the universe to exist is improbable. There's more. The fine tuning necessary for life to exist on a planet is nothing compared with the fine tuning required. So for life to exist, you need the right distance from the sun, you need the right amount of gravity, you need the right type of metal, you need the right type of nucleides, you need the right type of elements, you need so many, you need the right amount of uh, electrical, uh, 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 an electrical static uh, atmosphere, you need a certain type of atmosphere, so on and so forth. You can count up to 200 things you need for life that need to be there simultaneously, otherwise life, life will not exist. But for the universe to come into existence is even more improbable. For example, astrophysicists now know that the values of the four fundamental forces, gravity, electromagnetic force, strong and weak nuclear forces, were determined in less than one millionth of a second after the Big Bang. By the way, I already told you that the branches of science, they all don't agree with each other. Astrophysicist says the universe had a beginning. Newtonian physics says matter can be nor created nor destroyed. They're opposites. But the Big Bang is mentioned in Quran two places. I just want to share with you this and then read this quickly and then we'll pray. I had other things to discuss too, but inshallah next time. First, I want to recite to you, and you can look this up at home when you go, just in, when you're alone time, just ponder over this. Think about this. Surah Al-Anbiya, ayah number 30. Now, I had wanted to talk about science and Islam, but I don't have time. Time is running out. Did not the people who, dis, who, who denied the truth. Did they not see the heavens and the earth were one entity? أَلَمْ يَرَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَنَّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ كَانَتَا فَتَقْنَا رَتْقًا فَتَقْنَاهُمَا There were one entity, رَتْقًا فَتَقْنَاهُمَا And then we exploded it from there. وَخَلَقَ كُلُّ حَيِّ مِنَ الْمَاءِ And we created from water every living thing. So the Big Bang, the universe has a beginning. And the fact that the universe has a beginning is very problematic for atheists. Because atheists prior to the Big Bang idea have always believed that the universe always existed as it is. But even that was a problem because before they thought of Big Bang, the big point that was being raised in religious circles and in the intellectual circles, if you read the writings of that time, again, I don't have time, but if I take a spoon, if I take a spoon and I put heat on one side and ice on one side, what will happen? It'll eventually equalize the temperature. The question was, if the universe has always existed, why has the temperature of the universe not equalized? All the heat and all the cold of the universe would have equalized. It's not happened. Meaning there must have been some beginning. But then with the Big Bang, it became absolutely sure that the universe had a beginning. Okay. The second ayah I want to share with you is in Surah uh, Dariyat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says even more fervently, specifically about the Big Bang. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالسَّمَاءَ بَنَيْنَاهَا And the sky, we have built it. وَبَنَيْنَاهَا And why Allah has built it is so interesting. But again, I can't go into the details of this. 
والسماء بنيناها بأيد وإن لموسع وإن لموسع وسع الواسع وإن لموسع We have created this universe with our hands We've built it with our hands and we are expanding it This is the, the counter This is the asp, this one asp. So there was a big bang which is mentioned in the Anbiya and that it's continuing to expand at a, strong, at a faster and faster rate Again also in Quran This is our Quran I mean think about it so, let me just finish off what this article says, and then inshallah we'll pray. But I had a lot more to discuss, but uh, time has run out. So, gravity, electromagnetic forces, the strong and weak nuclear forces were determined less than one millionth of a second after the Big Bang. Alter any value, and the universe could not exist. For instance, if the ratio between nuclear strong force and the electromagnetic force had been off by the tiniest fraction of the tiniest fraction by even one part in one followed by 27 zeros, no, then no stars could have ever formed at all. Feel free to gulp. Think about it. Multiply that single parameter by all the other necessary conditions and odds against the universe. I'm going to sit down and do my second khutbah and then continue from there right Multiply that single parameter. Alhamdulillah, nahmadu. Alhamdulillah, ahmadu wa salli ala rasulil kareem. Amma ba'd. Multiply that single parameter by all the other necessary conditions, and the odds against the universe existing are so hard-stoppingly astronomical that the notion that it all just happened defies common sense. It would it would be like tossing a coin and having it come heads up. You know how you toss a coin and do heads up? It would be like tossing a coin and having it come up heads up 10 quadrillion times. Again, that's one followed by 27 zeros. If you can do that in, in any number of experiments, right? Infinite amount of experiments. If you can get heads up all the time, and here even this is not good enough because over here you have only two choices, up and down, heads or tail. But that's not the reality of the universe. It's much more than that, and Carl Jung makes this very clear, but I'm not going to go into this right now. But just for understanding something, the numbers, uh, so then he says, really, uh, Fred Hoyle, the astronomer who coined the term Big Bang, said that his atheism was greatly shaken at these developments. He later wrote that a common sense interpretation of the facts suggests that a super intelligent, ha a super intelligent being has monkeyed with physics as well as with chemistry and biology. The numbers one calculates from the from the facts seem to be so overwhelming as to put the conclusion almost beyond question. Theoretical physicist Paul Davis, uh, Paul Davis, has said the appearance of design is overwhelming. An Oxford professor, Dr. John Lennox, has said the more we get to know about our universe, the more the hypothesis that there is a creator gains in credibility as the best explanation of why we are here. The greatest miracle of all time, without any close seconds, is the universe. It is the miracle of all miracles, one that uh, indefinitely points with, a con with the combined brightness of every star to something or someone beyond itself. So this was the article. Please come forward. Again, just as a reference, this was printed in Wall Street Journal. It's caused a lot of noise. Uh, people have been talking about it in all different circles. Some people, of course, against it. A lot of people like, wow, we didn't realize this. Um, so this Wall Street Journal, and um, it was published. Uh, uh, I, uh, I'll let you know when it was published. But it's, it's gained a lot of notoriety. So let's finish with dua. Rabbana atina fi dunia hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa fina adab al-nab. ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكون من الخاسرين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم صل على محمد إن الله يعمل من الأدل والإحسان وإتاء الكرب وينحى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون إذكر الله يذكركم فاستجب لكم فأقيموا الصلاة